Hi everyone, it's Karen here with a brand new video on how to create texture for your backgrounds, for your mixed media projects, craft projects, artist projects, whatever you're doing. Just many different ideas that I thought of that I often use in my projects, but that I wanted to share with you in case you maybe haven't thought of some of those. So these are just great ideas. I didn't incorporate every single one into a project, but I do show you the idea of the material that I used. And some of them are very inexpensive household items all the way to expensive mediums that I use. And I'm showing you the whole broad spectrum of how to create texture. If there is something that you can think of that I didn't think about or I didn't show today, I would love to hear from you in the comment area. Just leave me a comment like sharing your good ideas for textures and maybe I'll incorporate those into a new video coming up where I could do part two of the same texture video and show some more ideas to share with the viewers. Thanks and enjoy! First way, my most common way that I like to create texture is using stencils and I have lots and lots of stencils and you can see a video before is one of my favorite tools, the stencils and you'll see a video about my top 10 favorite tools for mixed media and this is one of them. So I have just showing you that you can create this type of texture or this texture but you, of course you need a medium and what to create it. So you could create uh, using paint, using modeling paste, using gel, using gesso, basically uh, ink, these are just amazing for everything and all you have to do is just run them through um, you can see in lots of my videos i will link below where you can see how i've used stencils in many different almost every single video that i have uses stencils and how do i create texture with them so that's my number one way to create texture in a background in my mixed media projects A great way of creating texture is with fabric. So I often use things like cheesecloth to create a texture in the background or this kind of raffia, kind of like um, burlap uh, pieces, lace that can create really nice texture if you have some really nice old lace, doilies that have been woven. So I've kept my grandmother's and I've incorporated them into different elements of my artwork. So this is a great way of creating that texture in the background. So save up your things like that as well. Another way of making texture is having some cardboard. Um, I've mentioned this in another video as a hack, and this is a great way. Cardboard can be used for so many different things, but one of the main things is that you can create this texture. You can actually peel. Somehow this one is not peeling well, but you can actually peel uh, this really nice layer, and you can get this really cool texture, rib texture, in the background and you can use pieces of it or actually have patience like I don't have and and rip all of it off and then have that rib texture or even have something like that which looks like peeled peeled wall or something or something to that style so it's really nice to have that really cool texture in the background I also thought this was a really neat cardboard box that I it was the inside of a cardboard box and I saved it because I thought it was amazing to create some texture. I still haven't used it for anything, but I thought this is, wow, how cool is this? And I really loved and I saved it. Maybe I'll use it for a future project. This is one of my favorite things. This is drywall tape and it comes in two different forms. This one I can get at my local Home Depot here in Canada. And this one I had to get online from Amazon and I'll link the link below where I got it. And it kind of looks like Punchinella. And um, it's really nice because like it, first of all, it has like it's adhesive, but if not, you can just rip a piece of it and basically use it to create this really neat texture in the background. This one is, is definitely a, like almost like a tape and it a different type of uh, in different type of texture and you can get this really nice texture and you can rip this as well or cut, not rip it sorry cut it as well. So you could cut this and create this really nice 
texture effects because it's so easy to cut and you create this really nice uh, grid effect on your background so this is another nice thing to use and I really love using this to create texture in my backgrounds Another cheap way to create textures using old strips from like things you cut out from different papers. These are strips that I cut out that I when I'm making cards, just things that have been left over and I just you could just you basically glue them on a paper or create something with them. So, I mean, it's just really trying to find cheap ways or non-cheap ways to create texture, which is really uh, fun to do and you know, just to give you some ideas. Another cheap and inexpensive way to creating texture in the background is using either paper towels, could be napkins, anything that has a kind of a ridged pattern on it. And you could even separate this. You can get like two out of them because uh, paper towels are two ply or three ply sometimes. And um, I've used uh, napkins, uh, paper towels, sorry, that have already been stained that I, you can basically... Um, create this if you have this really nice texture but it's already colored or you could use this just as a as just a background you could like use some gel or mod podge and just stick it to your canvas and that creates a really cool texture as well so that's uh, another way to do it so play around with it as well and you can see some of my videos on this topic as well um, as, I've, as I've created other projects using paper towels Another great way to make texture is using tissue paper and this is really great because it's really thin and you can wet it or you can use it and when it crinkles like this you can make really cool texture backgrounds using gel. So you could like stick it on a background and you, all the veins kind of come out and create that really neat texture that is perfect for a background or you can build things with this which I've done in the past where with using gel. So that's a really great, uh, another play, um, material to make texture. And it's very cheap. It, I mean, you can buy it at a dollar store, but you can also like get it, you know, in gift bags when you get a, when you get gifts from your kids or for you or, or anything like that. So it's a really great, cheap way to making texture. Along with tissue paper that actually comes in many different like designs as well that you can buy or you can get the cheap one from the dollar store like this. This one is not from the dollar store. This is a really nice script one that I use sometimes on my project. Uh, um, besides that, you could use things like tissue uh, paper like, you know, like for your what you use to blow your nose or, you know, clean things, which is really great to create that kind of texture or toilet paper has nice designs, but also really good to create texture or to build things with. So those are things that I also um, like using in my projects. Of course, one of the most common ways to create texture is with stamps, and I love using this method. I use this a lot with different inks, and lately I've been stamping also inside modeling paste and gel to create this really nice thick texture. So I will link those videos here below as well, so you can see how I actually push the stamps into texture and create into modeling paste or gel and created this really neat texture in the in the actual paste but even just stamping with regular ink that's a great way of creating texture and you can see a lot of my videos here you'll see how I've used the different stamps and I show how I use them which I usually hold my stamps this way so I could stamp well on them and it, you create this really nice effect so for example and I'll show an example here so this is one of my favorite stamps and what I do is I hold it like this because if I want to get a distressed texture all I do is hold it up and then I'll get that really nice honeycomb effect and this is really neat to do because you get this really cool effect that is not straight same with this one for example right so you get you can get a really neat effect or even the script stamp which is one of my favorites as well and you can 
you know make this and i've used this one a lot lately because i've created these really nice distressed old looking papers so this was stamp was perfect for that so just go through my videos and you'll see where i've used this stamp as well so that's another great way of adding texture to your backgrounds one of the most amazing ways to create texture is with little stones or glitter or um microbeads mica flakes so these are all things that obviously you have to purchase so but some of these things for example these ones i've gotten from the dollar store and you can make really nice texture with these so that's really cool i've used these for many different things and you can create this really nice 3d texture these other ones i mean glitter i mean this is a prima marketing glitter but you can buy glitter this type of glitter or even the thinner one in again the dollar store or anywhere cheap um the other this is the same with beads like this is something that you could you know create this really nice texture yeah i would suggest mixing this with gel or with gesso or with paint or with any you want basically all you do is you mix it together this is the microbeads they're very thin and they're very like you know very micro mini 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 and they're really good for creating this really cool texture and then we have oh i haven't even opened this one then we have the mica flakes which are like uh pieces of mica this is the silver color and i'm just opening this so you can see um and they're just again give this really cool texture they're very very fine and they give a really nice texture as well one, one of my favorite products though from this past year were the art stones and these are actually uh, very very light people are always surprised how light they are and they are great for creating that really nice texture um, mixing these I mix these a lot with gel and create this really beautiful texture um, I'll see maybe here you can see how I used it in this project for example you see here I created this is has a lot a lot of texture and there it is the stones um, and here I've used other things as well right so this is really good the stencils in the background pieces of wood this is wire or string that I've used so the texture is there and all you have to do is just basically add the color so so this is a great way of adding texture by mixing this with different products. So you would be mixing it with, with gel, like the gel that is soft, or with a 3D gel. You could mix this with modeling paste. Okay, you could mix it with modeling paste. You could mix it with gesso, so heavy gesso or light gesso. So you could basically mix it with anything and it will create a really rich texture. along with the beads and the microbeads and everything else a great way to make textures using sequin i've used this a lot also in my different projects i love using these they're really fun you can keep them in this color or you can cover them completely and this is really cheap you can get it anywhere um this is from dress my craft but any sequin would work it's really fun to create texture with it Another way of creating texture is using basically bubble wrap paper and um, there is two different there's different sizes of it so you could use this really thick one or you could use the thinner one and I'll just demonstrate how to do that with the smaller one there's two different ways you could do you could create texture just by stamping with it and let's just, let me just show you what I mean so you could just paint on it and then stamp stamp with it so that's a good way of creating texture but you could also incorporate it into your artwork and create this really nice bubbly texture and I'll show you one of the projects that I made on how I incorporated this into my artwork Here you see this there's I incorporated this into my artwork and you can see here this is a perfect example of <clears throat> of a of a project that I created a lot of texture first of all there we have the stencil in the background with the modeling paste and then you have something like uh, tissue paper here 
you have beads which is another it's a great way of making texture which I've already shown here is cheesecloth which is fabric okay so that's another way that I shown how to make texture so just in this is I've, I teach this project but this is just really nice this is um, also another the right way rope okay so that's another fabric that could work with it so basically this project encompasses a lot of the products that I've shown today that can create a texture which is the bubble wrap the fabric which is these two are fabrics and then the the, the beads micro beads regular beads and um, the art stones oh the regular big beads like pearls and stuff like that so and look I've even used like old lids which I recycled which is really really great so this is just a great way of using things to create like uh, household items to create texture so there's another one which is the bubble wrap another way to create texture is using a glue gun and that's a really fun way to create texture on a background like I did here I created this actual butterfly with a glue gun just by going around a stencil in the background so I did this on an acetate piece and you can watch this video uh, of my live show that I created this with and I created this texture with the gel but this texture with actual uh, with a glue gun so there is another idea that I thought of that would be excellent for texture Another way of creating texture is using saran wrap, and that's really cool. I'll show you what I mean. So, for example, um, there's two different ways we could do it. So, for example, I could put paint on my background and then take saran wrap and kind of create these really neat patterns into it. So, sorry, you can't really see that because it's too short, too small of an area. But if I put a little bit more paint, this one is stuck hold on so if I put a little bit more paint which is not happening hold on okay so now I have more of a thicker paint okay I can create really cool neat patterns with my saran wrap and at the same time if you put the paint on the saran wrap and go and you press with it you can create that really nice texture as well so you could just move it around and create this really nice really nice texture Another way to create textures with a palette knife, and I'll show you how easy that is to do. And it could be done on modeling paste, gesso, paint, anything you want. So here is some paint. I'm using some different color now so you can actually see. And all you have to do is just pat it on and it creates this really neat texture on your background. So it's really, really, really simple. I know I've been experimenting a lot with this one piece of paper, but I just want to show you the different types of texture. Another way of creating texture is by using texturizing uh, materials. And these, of course, are not free, There's, so you would have to buy these, but they're just really cool. There's also some paint brushes that already have the texturizing part on the back. These are the Prima Finabare uh, texturizing brushes. Uh, this is the same one let me find you a different one so you can see and they create really nice texture so you can like you know create lines or you could create um you know thicker lines and with this one it's the same thing so for example you can create these really neat textures in the background so these are really neat this is by Lowell and Cornell, Lowell and Cornell, 
This is Faber Castell. This is a Prima Marketing Finavera ones that come with it. It's a dual brush. It comes with that and the texturizing at the top. So these are great. And I'll link those below as well. If you want, if you're looking to how to do texture, this is a great way of doing it. So there's just so many nice, cool products with it. And this is one of them. Well, uh, these are all different things that can create texture as well. Things like uh, thread or wire, okay, metal wire or this type of wire. And you could just, you know, because you saw before when I showed it that you can actually create this, um, create these really cool patterns with it as well. You can wrap it, you can tie things with, you can, we can, you can use like regular thread, sewing thread. Another really great thing to use uh, for texture um, is metal pieces. So things like nuts and bolts, you can save all different things from, um, from your, you know, garage and you could use them to create texture. So there's just so many ideas. And I'm sure there's a million others that I haven't even thought about and that I mean, so if you want to feel free to share if there's any other ideas that you can think of that um, that would be good for texture, share them below in the description area. And maybe I could make a second video regarding textures that like textures for projects. If you dabble a little bit in crafting or scrapbooking, you will have a lot of these things lying around, things like brads and eyelets and different buttons or little beads or things that just you've collected over the years that you never use. Um, and those are really fun to incorporate for texture in, in different things. Metals in general I talked about before or even wash washers are uh, really great for that. So you can go into your garage and pick up a bunch of things. So these are really fun also to incorporate as texture in your project. Another fun and easy way to create texture is using tape, masking tape or any type of tape. Um, there you can use um, this washi tape or just anything cheap you can find that is tape related. For example, here going back to my sheet again, you could just um, stick tape on and create these really cool lines. I don't know, sorry, this is not cutting properly. Um, yeah, make sure you always keep the tape in a way that you can open it up after. Um, but again, you see like it rips and you can create these really neat designs or you can create like a resist technique with it, like backwards. So then the it really masks everything. So you could just create this really neat texture in the background just using tape. Another fun way to create texture is with molds and this is just one type of mold. There's so many different kinds and you can just use in different mediums inside the molds to create these really nice textured uh, embellishments that you could apply to any of your projects, whether it's cards or layouts or even like you know canvases or it just decorate things and it makes things oh they're very fragile but you can make things really nice with them and just a, a great way to create texture as well another fun way to create texture is with wax this is a small wax pellet but any type of wax would work and you could just melt these on different things to create really cool effects and resist techniques that I've used before. You can check my YouTube channel for those as well. So these are really another fun way to create texture and it creates a really nice smooth texture, but also creates little grooves and you can just spread it around in your, in your artwork. This one is a very handy one. I'm not sure if you've ever seen this. I mean, if you buy canvases, this is a great thing um, that you could use. This is this comes in the in the back of the canvases. Some canvases, there are little pieces of wood that are like to mix it, make pressure on the canvas so that it's stiffer. But I don't use it, so I just collect them all. This is really great to make embellishments or create or or use as um, 
to give something 3D effect or height instead of the cardboard that I did, I said before, or just paint it and create, put words on it or anything like that. These are really, really handy. I've used them in my projects to, for collaging and it's just really, really great. And you know, cheap comes, if you're already buying the canvases, these are really cheap to use. Another cool texture idea is using plaster sheets. I've used this quite a few times in my projects. It's in a bag because it makes a big mess. It has a lot of like white powder there, but it's really cool. I cut it into strips or just using it like this. This is what they used to make, used to make casts with, and it's really texturized. It's really nice. So this is another way. I'll put the link below where I got this in Amazon, and it's just really great. Another great way to add to make texture is with salt. You could like, you know, use some coarse salt like the kosher salt or uh, basically just regular salt, which is finer. And you could mix this either put it on your projects and mix it or you can mix it with um, with some gel and it will create some really nice texture. So, for example, if you mix it with a little bit of gel, it will make this really nice paste. So for example, you could have the create this texture almost looking like, uh, it, it almost looks like, um, you know, the salts that you, you know, like a scrub that you use for the bath. So you could, the gel will help it stick to the background of your projects. You can also use salt and I've used this in other projects as well. You can look in all my brush -o videos. I've used salt to kind of absorb and creates a really cool technique where you absorb the watercolor and it creates a really nice um, a bubbly background on your watercolor paper. So that's something you can look on my YouTube and see how cool you can use the salt for a couple of different ways. But this is one of them as well. Finally, of course, I want to talk about like mediums that can create texture and there's so many of them. I can't even mention all of them. Things like gel or the soft gel, okay, that you can mix the stones that I shown before or the beads or just you run them through stencils. I mean, there's so many possibilities to do with this. Same with the modeling paste. You can stamp inside of them. You can... Uh, create texture with the palette knife the way I showed it before then there is things like um, texture paste with white sand and where things like have they're very gritty and there's a black sand then there's a crackle paste well, this is a copper color but there's so many different colors there's something like snowflake paste that this one creates something that looks like snowflakes when you add it there's the rust paste which makes things look really rusty and it's really gritty as well so it's really nice so it's so many of the products out there can create texture i mean it's endless there is the the um, there is the the gesso that can create here also gesso can create texture if you use it the other the right way and just so many different things that really create this really nice uh texture that we're looking for in the background so i mean i cannot mention every single medium that is out there but these of course are expensive so so you can go ahead and buy a couple and then invest in them as you go along as you experiment with the different techniques that are out there and you can feel free to look at my youtube channel to see what how i use some of these products because these are really good to add texture to your backgrounds Here you can see how one of the paste, the crackle paste, created this really cool texture for this canvas in my background. And I have a whole video uh, that shows how to create crackle paste. I actually have 10 ways to create crackle paste as well. So you can see that I will link that below as well. But I just um, thought this was really neat to show how these pastes really work. And this is just one example of them. Thank you so much for joining me today as I showed you all the products that I use to create textures for backgrounds, for your mixed media projects, for, 
things that I've used all the time that I like using in my projects and I'm just sharing them with you today. Things like common household items like cheesecloth or cardboard up to expensive mediums that maybe are not affordable for everyone but I just wanted to show you that there are other options for you to use in order to have uh, these really neat textures that you see out there in videos. So I hope you enjoyed it and please leave a comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel but especially if you want to leave a comment with another idea that you might have then go ahead and maybe I'll incorporate it next time when I do another one of these videos. Thanks so much. Bye.